In the year of 264 BC, Carthage, Rome's greatest enemy, began to colonize Sicily, which was too close to Rome's southern boundary. Sicily was an excellent staging platform for enemy invasion, and so Rome declared war on the Carthaginian nation. The Romans had armies, but Carthage had fleets. Soon Romans grew antsy, so they built a navy, and Carthage suffered a defeat. Carthage lost its navy and owed Rome tons of money. Sicily? Carthage lost it. And to spur their losses, Carthage went and gained colonies in Spain. This angered Rome. Spain was too close to their home, again. So then, Rome helped the Spanish to rise up against Carthaginian rule. This angered Carthage, who would have no more of this. They called for justice against Roman injustice. Their most skilled general, the great Hannibal, made a daring plan to march into the Roman territory, man by man. With 38 elephants of war and 40,000 men or more, Hannibal marched across a harsh mountain range known as the Alps, which were treacherous and would maim all that wished to gain access to its frosty domain. Here in the Alps, Hannibal remained. He lost half of his army, which was a shame, but the remaining fighting force was still very powerful and would be able to threaten the people of Rome at their homes. Little did anyone know he was there to remain for over 15 years of reign over the army which he sustained. The first major battle was one which would make the Romans' hearts rattle for years to come. The Battle of the Trebia River came to be the sum of Roman overconfidence and incredible negligence. The Romans crossed the river as Hannibal feigned retreat by a sliver. When the attackers were across halfway, Hannibal didn't show the Romans any mercy or say in the massacre that ensued. Carthaginian forces hiding in the hills, the Romans knew in vain when they were flanked from behind, escape must be obtained, but this was not to be as far as Hannibal could see. With broken morale and stiffened resolve, the Romans raised an army to solve the issue and renewed the fight and hoped that they would not take flight. Hope of such was but a fruitless thing, which the Battle of Lake Trasimene clearly sends, with Hannibal detailing one of the greatest victories ever won. The Roman general, Flaminius, was the most impetuous of all the Romans, and so Hannibal baited him, which got him running on a rip. The strung out Romans were then susceptible to an awful rout of the utterly vulnerable. The Romans, with their backs to the lake, were punished, left in Hannibal's wake. Every minute, 600 Romans were killed, including Flaminius himself, until all the glory of victory was Hannibal's to take. Eventually, the Romans found themselves yet again facing Hannibal's forces in Roman territory, and, as per the norm, they again faced utter scorn from their fellow Romans when they returned from the disaster at Cannae. The Romans, now under Vero, tried to contain their sorrow as Hannibal made a victory as bait over Cannae, bearing a Roman supply depot. Of course, this foothold split the Romans, apart from their crucial supply runs, which made battling so much more enticing. Vero, in creating the battle line, chose large depth over front, which in time sealed the fate of the battle. Hannibal deployed an echelon and paid closest attention to strategy on the field. Hannibal made his enemy feel as if their fate had already been sealed. The 
Carthaginians feigned gradual retreat, which gave Romans the thought of the rain while they were in for a treat. Numerous Carthaginian cavalry routed the Roman opposites and inflicted countless casualties due to Roman incompetence. With the Romans pressing and Hannibal enveloping, it was not long before they made the trap spring. Hannibal's cavalry returned to the field, which trapped the Romans in their wall of shields and a pool of misery that would not yield. This was no battle. It was Rome's second greatest defeat, an execution of thousands made a feat by Hannibal the Great. After defeats at Cannae, Lake Trasimene, and the Trebia River, the Romans came up with a plan to make them the winner. Their strongest general, Scipio by name, would march into Carthage with his massive brigade of soldiers and strike Carthage on its own shores, with the goal of quickly ending the Second Punic War. Scipio won many decisive victories and offered peace to Carthage quite generously but Hannibal was called back and was ready to attack. The two deadly forces met at a battle of which the likes had not yet been seen in Africa. The Battle of Zama was a decisive Roman victory and it won the war for the people of Italy. Both sides largely followed tradition, with infantry manifestations hogging the middle, and cavalry on the flanks. The Carthaginian elephants of the war, or tanks, charged into the center of the Roman line. Here, they were, in time, isolated and discombobulated. While the Roman cavalry routed the Carthaginian troops that were mounted and left the field of bloodshed. The Romans took a strategy, one that was refined. The Romans, and soon Carthage confined, themselves into single battle lines. After the battle appeared to be a tie, the Roman cavalry initiated as part of the grand strategy a vice-like attack on Hannibal's army. On their vulnerable rear, Hannibal's army was trapped. Thus ended the acme of his career. Carthage lost its army and its agreement to surrender. They also lost colonies, and now could never become a major power on the Mediterranean Sea, but the Romans still saw them as a powerful enemy. So they sent Scipio back and started a third war with Carthage, and although Carthage stirred up an army and was swiftly defeated, Rome destroyed Carthage, they took whatever was needed, and burned the rest. Legends have told that they even salted the soil so nothing could be grown. Thus ends the history of the Three Punic Wars, where Carthage, a strong city pre-war, was completely destroyed to be seen nevermore. It also proved mighty Rome to be the strongest empire on the Mediterranean Sea. They now controlled Spain and Sicily, along with Macedonia, Greece, and their first Asian colony. <laughs>